this is gonna be a let's play of the dark eye fifth edition and which is already on kickstarter for its new english edition too but it's the fifth edition in german and first of all the two of us are german he's not we're going to that. What, why are you looking like that, Max? That's, that's, <laughs> he, so he's a German. great Brit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're playing with the German edition because we don't have the English one yet. So um, we might get some things mixed up and I'm sorry for that but we're trying to do our best. So um, as for who we are, I'm Mayri Schlitter and I've been playing The Dark Eye practically uh, consistently since I was 12. And I've also written a few books for it, and I've translated the Dark Eye computer game Black Guards 2 from German to English. And that one used um, all the, the old English translations, so I hope I won't mix those up, because they're <laughs> different from the one that's going to be used for the 5th edition. So, um, before I'm going to... Uh, before I'm going to say a little bit more about the Dark Eye and its history, um, let's introduce our players. I'm going to be the Game Master. This is Julia. Hi, Hello. Julia. Hello. You're German, but you also do a lot of translating because you've studied English. And what did you write your final thesis about? About fantasy literature. <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Max, who's Hello. a Brit, as you probably already noticed. And I, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever played The Dark Eye before? No, I've never played The Dark Eye before, nor even heard of it, really. I have played some Pathfinder and some D&D. Um, okay. But no, no, no DSA. As it's called as it, in as, German. As I would say. Das Schwarzau. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to be our guinea pig. Um, We're going to teach you a lot about what's different with the Dark Eye compared to other D20 games. Because we're using D20s, but differently. You know, we, we, still, we still roll them, but this <laughs> oh, is good, good, different. Good. And Julia, you did play a little bit of, of the Dark Eye. Yeah, a few years ago, but it was an older edition. So I'm quite curious how the rules have changed now. Yes. As I've already mentioned, it's already the fifth edition, um, and they changed a few things. They streamlined it mostly. Mm. The fourth edition was very, very complex, had lots of layers, and they decided to do it a bit differently for the fifth edition, so you can play with the basic rules, and that but basically covers everything, mm. because, you know, basic rules. <laughs> but then you can add on as much as you like as a player or as a game master and get new levels of complexity if you want that. So basically the difference is um, if you want to go for a hunt you can just roll once if you use the basic rules and then you know whether you've got some food for your group or not and if you use other layers of complexity you maybe um, you might have to do more rolls and find out exactly where you're hunting and if you manage to find an, an animal and then you have to hunt it down and things like that. Okay, we're going to play with the basic rules. We're Thank not going to play with the focus rules. <laughs> yeah, And uh, The Dark Eye covers a lot of um, kind of genres. It's a fantasy role-playing game, but you can play it as high fantasy, you can go into dungeons, but mostly, and it's also the way that we play, it's very much also about social interaction. And one thing a lot of people compare it to now, it's older than Game of Thrones, but a lot of people compare it to Game of Thrones mm. because there's also a lot of courtly intrigue and um, things like that. Um, and yes, it's older than, than Game of Thrones, exactly 31 years old now. It's from 1984 and over the time there has been a lot of changes and additions, but also it's got a living history. So every year that passes in real time, there's at least one year, and sometimes there were two years um, that passed in game time. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of history that has also that has been covered in adventures and other books. So um, there's a lot of of depth to the history and to the world of the Dark Eye. And we're going to play on the main continent, on Aventuria, mm -hmm. which is the base game continent. There are a few more, mm -hmm. but they're more exotic. And uh, we're going to play in a very medieval setting, which is called the Middle Realm, mm -hmm. and that's um, very much, you know, chivalry, high, high um, medieval age. And the fun thing about it is that a lot of people have written books for the Dark guy who actually have studied medieval studies and yeah. things like that. Um, so there's a lot of real influences to it. Mm. And um, 
part <clears throat> of the backstory for the Dark Eye is that during the last decades there have been a lot of changes on this continent of Aventuria because there's been a rise of a demigod called Borbarat who promised that every human who followed his teachings would become a mage because magic was real in Aventuria. Of course, it's a fantasy setting, but there's not a lot of people who can do magic. And there's a lot of rules for them if they want to be accepted in society. So um, magic is powerful, but for many people it's also very mysterious and a lot of people don't know about it. And, and if they see a mage or if they see an elf or something, there's like, ooh, <laughs> strange creature, or they're afraid of them. Which is fun because Julia is going to play in half of mage. <laughs> And uh, this demigod, Borbarat, um, he got a lot of followers, some of them because they believed what he said, and many of them just become, um, because they wanted to see the world burn. Well, <laughs> And he was finally banished, which is one of the most popular adventures ever. Um, so you could play this banishing of Borbarat. I've heard of that campaign, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the campaign for the yeah. dark, <laughs> I think. And um, afterwards, some people picked up where he left off and they created the, the so-called Darkness or Shadowlands. And by now, most of those have fallen too, but a few are still left. And we're going to play right where the Middle Realm ends and one of these Shadowlands starts. Transicelia, as it is called, a part of, um, of Tobrien, which is the eastern part of the Middle Realm. And there's still a lot of weird and dark things going on in Torbrian. You have three, or had three people who had the say over there, and one of them was a crazy mechanic who created a city that was ever changing. And one of them has planted demonic trees everywhere, and one of them is a werewolf who rules the land. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, of evil people over there. Other um, Shadowlands was like, one was ruled by an undead dragon and there were a lot of undead people walking around. And <laughs> yes. And that's all concentrated in the east of the Middle Realm. And you're, um, we're gonna, gonna throw you into the, what, into the happening, into our story, because we are not going to play a long adventure, we're just going to show how the Dark Eye works. And I also created for you legendary characters. You can create kind of normal characters and then you can, can make them um, greater just right from the start just mm. by using more points. Mm. It's, it's a system where you don't roll to mm. find out how good you are. That's been um, part of older versions of the Dark Eye, but you buy different things mm -hmm. with your points. Mm -hmm. So you're very good, actually, yeah, yeah, at you like yeah. Yes. <laughs> you're playing a warrior. Yes. And you're very good at hitting things. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's, that's pretty much it, really, with uh, warriors, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You're, you're also nobility. That's true. Lesser nobility, but still. I thought that was, would, be, <laughs> would be nice for your British a, a accent. Le a, a lesser noble who's good at hitting things. Okay. Yes. So he, he can hit things and look snobbish while he does so. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. He, he's very good at that. Um, he's very good with a sword and a shield. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. And not as good with other weapons, but still quite proficient okay. in killing people with anything that comes to hand. Cool. So, and you are a mage. Yes, a half-elven mage. And you're a guild mage. There's different kind of mages in the Dark Eye, and the guild mages are the ones that are most common in human cultures. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of the classic mages, you know, long robes, mm -hmm. wearing pointy hats, yeah. having a staff, and lots of rules. Um, kind of uh, how they can use the magic, when they can use the magic, and things lots like Lots of that. spells. Yes, and you've got lots of spells. We're also playing with the card decks, with the German card decks, which make it easier to get an overview of what you can do and what you cannot do. So you've got a lot of spells on these cards. Like this Guardianum is a spell that protects you from magic. Mm -hmm. That is cast Practical. against you. And you can do other things like throw fire at an enemy or at Max if he annoys you. Be careful. I can block it with my shield, right? <laughs> yeah, um, basically, basically you can. The rules say you can try that, but it's not going to work that well. Oh. And it's going to cost you the shield, I oh. guess, because it's going to be set on fire. I but then so. I have a flaming shield. Then you have a flaming <laughs> shield, which is very impressive for a yeah. short time. And, I, as, and as long as it's long enough for someone to take a picture. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
already found my favourite one. This is a yes. flaming sword. I can turn my staff into a yeah, flaming, flaming sword. sword. To match yes. my flaming shield. That's very cool. Yeah. I need to add that to my character profile. <laughs> the flaming shield. The flaming shield. Flaming shield. flaming shield. Yes. You've got a great character portrait. What what class am I then socially? Am I, am um, I ability as well? Peasant. You're yeah, no, you are you're a scholar. Oh. Um the social status it's not gonna be important for oh, us. Okay. That's um just uh, something that you use when kind of you are trying to interact with nobility. If you're going to play court intrigue, that's going to be very yeah. important because not everyone is going to be able to talk to everyone. Um, there are, you know, some adventures where you have to actually talk to the empress of the Middle Realm. Mm. And yeah, if you know the boss of the Middle Realm is uh, a woman mm -hmm. nice. right now. <laughs> and um, yes, so yeah, but if you don't know how to talk to her. Yeah. That's also covered in under a talent called etiquette. And so uh, the basics are you've got attributes, you've got eight attributes, mm -hmm. and then you've got skills. And skills can be talents, they can be weapon skills, and they can be spells or miracles. And yeah, you've got a lot of talents here from flying, which is important if you're a witch, because <laughs> witches can fly. <laughs> That's another kind of mage. Do they need a broomstick? They need a broomstick or something similar, yes. An enchanted broomstick, it's like your major staff just able to sweep. Would a mop do? <laughs> Would a mop do? Probably, yes. Yeah. I guess so. You can also so. use a magic mop. Or um, <laughs> there have been people making jokes about using the spell on chairs. Or something. Mm, yeah. I think a mop's funny. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've got a couple of spells and uh, yes. skills in here, so... Yeah, things like you know, you know, so climbing true. or riding, but also things like um, pickpocketing. Pickpocketing, yes. Oh, yeah. I like this one. Basically, binging, binge binging, drinking. Yes. binge drinking. Drinking, <laughs> drinking alcohol is <laughs> a skill. Quaffing. It's a talent. <laughs> Quaffing, yes, Quaffing. it's a talent in the dark eye. No power. <laughs> it's very important. Oh, that's good. Um, human. Yeah, no, knowing how people oh, work, yeah. basically. Human knowledge. You can roll on that if you want to know if someone is lying or if someone has a hidden motive. Yeah. So, as, as you can see, the talents have been, have been shrunk down mm -hmm. since um, the 4th edition, but it's still a lot. Yeah. It's still a lot that's covered. It's quite there. varied, yeah. Yes, you can brew your own beer, for instance. Nice. Yeah, I'm quite... Uh, have... So I have magical skill besides my actual magical powers. Yes, you've got knowledge skills. So mm -hmm. you know about magic. On on uh, on magical theory, just the knowledge, yeah. And you know about uh, how the worlds work because mm -hmm. you've got um, you've got the um, the world of Anturia Zon, and that's just part of a lot of magical and supernatural spheres that mm -hmm. are interacting. And you know how they work or how they're supposed to work. So you know where demons come from yeah. and where a divine power comes from. I know nothing about board games. <laughs> you know nothing about board games. Yes, board games is also a skill. Neither no, no, do I. I don't yes. know that's that's games. very traditional. You yeah. know, the dark eye has been around for a long time, and there have been a lot of questionnaires, and there was a beta for the new edition, and people were like, "We we need to have coffee, <laughs> and we need to have board games and things <laughs> like that. We want to have it in there, but you don't have to to kind of invest points in yeah, it if, you if you're not interested. Very meta. Yes. <laughs> And I also liked what uh, uh, that I can I can draw and paint and um, it's important as a mage yeah. because you have to do your magical circles yeah. if you want to conjure um, any supernatural creature. Yeah, I like that. That's very hands-on magic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those are the characters you're gonna play. Do you have names for your characters? Yes, yes. I'm Valaria. Valaria. I'm Antonio. 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 <laughs> Antonio the noble warrior. Antonio, noble warrior. The, Antonio the noble warrior. There we go. That's That's the flaming, <laughs> with the flaming shield. With the flaming shield. It's a very long it's title. Quite, There's not enough room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your card is going. <laughs> yeah. The noble it's gotta be big. <laughs> warrior. Okay. Um, the dark eye has lots of different regions. Uh, as I said, we're going to play and the Moon Realm, which is very much medieval times mm -hmm. with magic and under dragons and things like that. Nice. But there are a lot of castles, people on horseback, peasants <laughs> who are attending the fields, things like that. Yeah. But there's also like a region that's uh, Arabian Nights basically, mm -hmm. with genies and magical dancers. Okay. And there's also something that's like the Italian Renaissance, mm -hmm. and uh, there's the Greek region, and you also got kind of fant fantasy Vikings, the Thorval people. 
Cool. So lots of different settings for anything mm -hmm. you would like to play. Um, okay, well, um, we're starting at a point where you've already kind of finished most of your quest. Oh, okay. That was easy, well done. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well done, Go the two us. of you. Um, because you've been asked um, to infiltrate a cult mm -hmm. and to find out more about it, because uh, most people on Avaturia believe in a circle of 12 gods who kind of protect the world from evil. Mm -hmm. And there's churches for each of them, and priests for each of them. There's also demigods, they're not as important. But um, they say there's a nameless 13th god. Mm -hmm. And each god rules one month, but the 13th, he has five days for himself, and evil things happen when those are around. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who's, who's trying to destroy the world since basically almost the beginning of time. There has been a great falling out of gods somewhere in the far past and he lost his name and he was chained to a rift in the stars that he opened to let the demons in and they say he's still chained there but he's got a lot of people working for him hidden in the shadows and you've tried to flush out a cult of him mm -hmm. in the Midden Realm and right now you're following one of the people that you have identified as belonging to this cult and this guy basically ran away and you're um, following him, he's traveling towards the Shadowlands. Mm -hmm. Although, and this you know because you know about religion, as your character she tells you, and things like that. Yes, the the thirteenth, the nameless one, doesn't really is not really involved in the Shadowlands. Mm -hmm. The Shadowlands are um, a demonic evil, mm -hmm. and he is like the fallen god evil. It's mm -hmm. different. Okay. And they say that also some of the fall of, uh, of the worshippers of demons are hunting the nameless one just the same as the good guys do. So yeah, he's the enemy of the enemy yeah. too, but it doesn't say... make the demon worshippers your friends. Yeah. <laughs> so the nameless one really has it in for him because everyone's just sort of trying to. Yeah, the name. N no one likes the name. No one, one likes the name. This one. No. But those that actually worship him, because uh, this, uh, he promises that he's going to remake the world. Mm. But it's uh, all the cults are very, very dark and very strange. You always have to cut off a part of your limbs to become one of, of his priests. So everyone who's lost a hand, the same thing is mm. dodgy. Yeah. dodgy. <laughs> Don't want to be messing with those. It was a farming accident, I swear. <laughs> And you're following this this person, um, who's called Alric, and this is kind of everyone's called Alric in the Dark Eye. <laughs> it's the most common name. It's like like having Smith as a surname. Yeah. Or John. Alric. John Smith. Alric <laughs> Fairman, which translates as Bargeman, I think, and who was basically an undercover as just a normal merchant, but you've um, sussed out that he's actually one of the, the informants for a cult of the Nameless One, and that's why you're hunting him, because he knows the names of everyone else in the region mm -hmm. who yeah. is part of this cult, and you need his knowledge to get the rest of them, and to uncover who might also be hidden there. Is there maybe some cultist of the Nameless One at the Imperial Court mm. just waiting to strike? You don't know. But he might have the key to that. Are we doing this just for ourselves, because we're the good guys, or are we doing this for someone? Um, you've been contacted by one of the churches of the Twelve, actually by a subcult of the Church of Raya. Mm -hmm. Raya is the Twelfth of the Twelve gods, and she's the goddess of love, sex, roses, and killing the nameless one, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is not her Goodness. official job, but, um, but, she, yeah, but she does have a subcult that is basically hunters of the nameless ones, cool. and they have contacted you through mm -hmm. one of their agents and asked you to help out, and because, you know, it's for the good thing, and they're also paying well. The greater good. The greater good. It's for the greater the money. Good. And gold. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds good. But right now you're without any help from them because you had to move fast and you're still traveling hard and you're leaving kind of the civilized regions mm -hmm. um, for the last few days. All you have seen uh, have been small villages and some people who are living in the woods by themselves. And now you're traveling hard for the border mm. that um, is called the Black Sickle. 
it's a mountain range mm -hmm. and basically there's no there's uh, there's not going to be a border sign or there's not going to be any markers but you know that on the other side of this mountain range the dark things are waiting mm -hmm. oh, God. great <laughs> so you don't know if this person is going to meet someone there or if he's just trying to get somewhere where you're not going to follow but you have to catch him fast yeah okay um, we're riding, I suppose. Um, you are riding, you got horses, but um, it's gonna be a tough travel through the mountains because yeah. a lot of the paths are not meant for horses, yeah. so they're more like for goats <laughs> oh. <laughs> and for people on foot. Where can I buy a, a riding goat? Um, <laughs> actually, you probably would have to go to a dwarf for oh, okay. for that. <laughs> I suppose. I suppose there's no dwarves around here. Um, there's a lot of dwarves in the Min Realm, but not in the Black Sickle anymore. Oh, okay. mm. Yes. Um, there's actually there have been dwarven dwarven underground cities that have vanished because of the Shadowlands, and all the dwarves moved out or killed. Mm. So. Oh dear. Oh dear. So 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 no riding goats then. No riding goats. <sighs> just just your horses, and at some point you're probably going to have to leave them behind and yeah. okay. push on on foot. So we're clearing when they're in yes. those mountains. Or... At the at this point, you're following um, a path that is still fit for riding, and that is slowly leaving behind the wooden bits, and you're getting into the parts where there's less trees, most of them right, and um, a lot more of really really dry mountain range. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a strange smell on the wind. You don't know whether that's that's the natural smell of the land or that's already something that's drifting in from the shadowlands. Mm. The weather is hot here. It's in summer, and although some of the days it's overcast, it's a very, very, very um, heavy weather. It's like you, every when you move, you sweat. Mm. Oh, yes. It's not nice and heavy armor. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, you've um, you've got a perk that makes it easier for you to wear armor, so oh, that's good. you can nice. you can walk and ride in your chainmail armor without getting any subtraction from your fighting skills or things like that. Usually, if you're wearing armor, it's going to cost you a few points. Right, but but I'm pretty good with armor. You're very good with armor, actually. Excellent. So. But you come to a point where this path meets another path and there's kind of a very, very small, very dry crossways. <laughs> <laughs> and basically this is the point where you have to decide if you um, are going to follow the one that leads further on into the mountains and to the Shadowlands or maybe uh, maybe the guy you're following has taken one of the other paths mm. and is just trying to lose you somewhere here. Okay. Hang on, I think I can do... I can read tracks, I believe. You can read tracks. I'm actually yes. for a mage, mm. um, as I was very told earlier. Mage. I'm a very practical mage. And I'm, I can I can actually survive outside of buildings. Yes, <laughs> you're good. you're part of the Grey Guild. There's three mm. mages guilds. The white ones are like magic is dangerous and we have to do our best to control <laughs> it, and the black ones are like oh f all the rules, and the grey mages are about. I'm oh, sorry. I just, I said, <laughs> I just thought. I, screw, I, screw, I dropped drop the f bomb. Screw the rules. <laughs> screw the rules. Screw the rules. We have magic. <laughs> and the grey ones, they are uh, mostly about knowledge and mm. about doing the right thing and everything mm. in temperance. No. Yeah. And but um, you're from um, an academy that produces very very practical mages. Mm -hmm. Lowangen, it is called the grey academy at Lowangen. Um, they concentrate on shaping the living. You can also shape uh, shape non-living objects, but you're good at changing your own shape and then healing people. Nice. That's two of your special specialties. And they're also very, as I said, very practical because the region they're living in has been raided by orcs and things like that. So <laughs> you have to fend for yourself good, or yeah. be able to. And you can read tracks. That's basically what I'm trying to say yes. because you've learned it because you, um, when you learn magic, you're also kicked out of the academy to learn practical skills. Yeah, I have some, some good stuff. stuff. I have tracks, I can I can orientate myself, I can do You know plants, plants and animals, you know, animals. And stuff. Yeah. Yes. So you would you would like to check this place for tracks for anything? Yes. Maybe it will help. Yeah. Who knows? So do you know how to do that? No. <laughs> D twenty I believe. Yes you roll D twenty and you roll three of them. There's um, different kinds of of uh, of checks 
And a skill check means that you find the talent or the spell that you are trying to do. Mm -hmm. And there's also always um, notes about which attributes mm -hmm. you need for your skill check. Mm -hmm. so and this says you need sagacity. <laughs> no, I'm going to do tracks. Oh, tracks. Yeah, this was orientation. Sorry. So you need courage, intuition and agility. And then you don't roll on, on the number you have in the talent, which is six, but you roll on three numbers that are part mm -hmm. of your attribute. All right. And you have to roll low. And it's not D&D. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling low is good. Rolling a 20 is bad. Yeah. Oh. And the worst thing ever you can do um, is, like, when you do a talent skill check, is roll three 20s. Yeah. <laughs> what the number at the talent means if you roll for instance you start with courage mm -hmm. and you roll a die for courage a d20 and you have to because um, you've got 15 in courage you have to roll a 15 or less mm -hmm. but you, if you roll a 17 you can use up two points of your talent points to kind of add them to your um, mm -hmm. attribute all right so we're going to see how this works please roll on <laughs> on this very very nice fake leather bound limited edition Uh. of the basic rules. There are different versions of the basic rules. Um, the limited edition is so limited that by now um, you can't get it <laughs> anymore. Um, unless you, you're going to find one on eBay or things like that. And then there's the normal edition, which is um, this hardcover book. And then there's a smaller softcover edition, which is... Um, the idea behind that is if you want more than one book for your group, you can get these because they cost less. Mm -hmm. So this, um, I like this idea a lot. Um, a lot of uh, role-playing games have started doing it like this in Germany too now. Um, because the cheaper the book, the more I'm going to buy. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you have to roll on courage, and you have to roll on intuition, and you have to roll on um, agility. So that's a 15 or less, a 16 or less, and a 14 or less. Let's okay. start with courage. Okay, courage, here I go. And that's a one. Oh. That's, that's the that's symbol of the dark yeah. eye. <laughs> and that's the best you can roll, it's a one. Nice. That's a very, very good start. If you get a second one, this is going to be a very good roll. Okay, <laughs> so now I'm going to roll for... Do I have to um, confirm or do I just roll for intuition? No, you, no you roll for intuition. Confirming is just for fight situations. Eight. And that's an eight. So intuition... Sixteen and intuition, I believe. It's fine. So cool. And what was the and other now, one? Um, now uh, you have agility, agility which that's is marked as GE. GE. Yeah. Um, Gewandtheit in German. <laughs> 18. Oh. But you've got 6 in your talent. So you, you had to roll a 12 or less, and if you add all the 6 talent points to it... Oh, okay. Oh, oh it's the 6 from um, right. from my from my talent of uh, tracking. Right. Yes. So the talent need these... for, for reading tra yeah. tracks, that's um, here, there's a 6. Yeah. And that basically says you now can add your 6 points, and that means that the 18 or less is also... Uh, a success. So do I need these talent points for anything else or is that literally just what I do with them? No. If you've got some of them left over, they're going they're going to decide how well you did. Mm -hmm. This is a role where you have no points left over that basically says, yes, you were able to find something. Mm -hmm. But for all for every three points that you have left, because these points um, are used up when you use them for for um, adding up mm -hmm. Um, so if you had rolled, for instance, a 17 at Courage, you would have used two points and you couldn't have used yeah. these two points anymore for yeah. the rest of this one three die mm -hmm. check. So um, if you, for every three points you have left of it, uh, after a check, you get one quality uh, step. And that means that you find some, uh, get some more information in this case. Or if it's like a crafting check, then mm. what you do gets better. Yeah. And things like that. Okay, but now so this I've basically means just saved yeah, myself that you spend a few minutes checking the path to the right, to the left, and the path ahead, and you um, realize that to the left, uh, to the left, yes, to the to left, the right. and to the right, both directions. Yeah. No one's uh, no one's been there on foot or in a horse in the last few days. Um, goats have been here, and other wild yes. animals. Let's get, one. Let's, get one. <laughs> let's, let's get a goat. Um, but you find some some tracks of a horse 
that are leading on towards the Shadowlands. So you're not quite sure if it was just one or if there's another person traveling with this mm -hmm. one, but there are some, some signs like uh, disturbed earth and uh, signs where um, a horse with shot hooves has disturbed the earth and kicked mm -hmm. away a few rocks and things like that. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll have to go into the mountains then. Oh no, I was hoping to get a go. <laughs> Our horses will do for now, so. Okay. I suppose we should probably carry on. All right, lead on. Okay, that was our first check. <laughs> Did you understand the rules? Yeah, it makes sense. No, actually, I think it's um, it's quite uh, useful with the uh, rolling below the number because then the higher the number, the better. So yes. that's quite good. Mm. Makes sense. I just have to check which um, abilities, which attributes. They use, yes. I, I use. And because you're, you're a mage, of course your sagacity is high and your intuition is high because you need them to cast spells. Yeah. Because most spells are going to, to use um, sagacity because mm. you're a guild mage. Yeah. There's other traditions of magic that use more intuition or charisma. Mm -hmm. But um, you're kind of the, the bookish mage. Yeah. So sagacity is. Yes. Yeah. And you're, ba yeah. you're bad at constitution <laughs> and at strength. Yeah, I'm not very strong. <laughs> no. See, I'm good at those things. Yes. This, no. is, this is why we're a team. You, you, Nicely balanced. You can take a lot of damage before you know, gonna keel over and die. Excellent. And buy me time to make a flaming sword. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So you keep riding on. Yeah. It's about midday at this point. Very warm. Well. Yeah. <laughs> No shade. No shade. Yes. And it's an, it's kind of a slightly unnatural heat, mm. you think. It shouldn't be this warm in this region at the time. At um, one and a half hour later that you have been making good time towards the higher bits of the mountains, kind of snaking your way through valleys and other few brooks, but no more crossings, no other paths. You hear a commotion up ahead. You can't yet see what's happening, but um, it's kind of a small, smaller valley that branches off and mm -hmm. um, where the path is leading, probably to um, some higher pass or things like that. And you can hear someone fighting and people shouting out. You can't understand yet what they're saying, mm. but something is happening over there and it's not friendly. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Well, we should definitely check it out. Yes. I agree. <laughs> um, is, is, is there a kind of perception equivalent? Yes. Um, it's uh, called Zinnescherfe. Where's that? Um, it's over here. In oh, yeah, yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah. There we go. You're okay at it? I'm not so okay Not yeah. <laughs> You're a bit least, little bit less okay I at, at least have it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you can roll on that to try to make out how many people there are or okay. what they're saying. Kind of a listening check. Yes, excellent. <laughs> I love the yes. flaming shield. <laughs> yes. And Antonio the Noble Warrior with the Flaming Shield is the full title. So you have to I, roll. I need to roll on. Um, sagacity. Sagacity and intuition twice. Okay. Oh, you can. Oh, that's the same thing, so you can roll yeah. twice. The same thing. Oh, I see. Yes. For for instance, here um, yeah. controlling yourself when you, you when you suffer from pain and when you have you have to concentrate. Courage that means twice. you need courage twice and yeah. constitution once. Okay. Interesting. So I, I don't think my chances are as good as the last skill check, but we'll yes. see. You start off with sagacity. So, sagacity, whatever that means. <laughs> and that's a seventeen. That's a seventeen. That's not. Yeah, good. you need all five points. <laughs> I think you had five. I have five. Yeah. Yeah, for, yeah. You need all five points to pass to your pass sagacity that. check, okay. and then you have to do two intuition checks. Okay. One. Sixteen. Uh, no. 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 And you're out of points, so basically, no. the no. last. It, Roll of the die, and it's not going to change anything. Well, let's do it anyway. Oh, Three. there yes. we go. What a shame. So if you roll, uh, if so, when I rolled a one um, to make it a critical success or something, I'd have yeah, you to need roll to, another one. If, if you if you're doing one of the talent checks where you roll three dice, you need two to ones mm -hmm. to get a special um, effect yeah. out of it. Okay, cool. And if you attack, you just need one. Um, you, you just roll one die. Mm. We're going to get to that, I think, pretty soon. <laughs> mm. And if you roll a one, that's a success. 
an automatic success basically and then you roll again and if that would be a normal success then it's a very special success then you're going to do something very cool with it <laughs> okay well so no you no i can't you, you you strain your ears but you can't tell who's calling and what they're saying or what actually is happening you think that you hear someone fighting you hear steel on steel okay and some clashing but that's it Bah, I don't think we should wait to see. I'm just gonna grab my staff from wherever it is and <laughs> charge on and see what, what's going on. On your horse. On. on, yes. On your yes. horse. You on charge horse. You, you charge on. Maybe you should... Uh, um, okay. Usually I would say if, if you're going <laughs> to charge into a fight on your horse, that's gonna be another skill check on riding. But just let's skip that. <laughs> because Good, we've shown like, skill checks. Yeah. I can't ride. You know? <laughs> Yes, um, if you don't have any number in that in that talent, it doesn't mean that you can't ride at all. It doesn't mean that you're <laughs> going to try to mount the horse and you just yeah. fall off way or things. Like yeah. It just means that if you're doing something tricky on a horse, yeah. it's going to be hard. You can still I could do it. You can still yeah. do a check, mm -hmm. but you don't have any points to add if you yeah. miss one I see of, what you mean. Of, yeah. of the checks, right? I, I can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've got four points. Yes. And I think that's... But you're not, very, you're not at all specialised in no. um, fighting from horseback. In mounted combat. Yes, no. you don't have it. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh wait, but, so, just, but you charge around basically yeah. around I'm the just corner, riding quickly uh, yeah. uh, about uh, around a few outcroppings of, of rock and then you see that yes there's a fight taking place and you see the person that you've been following um, Alec and he's being forced down on his knees and someone else who's probably being his, um, his companion or his ranger or guide whatever is lying bleeding on the ground and there's two people forcing Alric to his knees and one person standing in front of him and obviously the winners of this fight and you know a little bit more than he does about the gods and the churches and the cults and you immediately recognize the woman standing in front of Eirek as being a priestess of Prios. Mm -hmm. Prios is the first of the twelve gods, he's said to be the ruler of the twelve gods and he, um, symbol he's the sun god and he's against magic most of the time and he's very much against anyone doing mischief and um, against demonic problems and things like that mm. and he's also the god of the rulers so you know a little bit about it because you're nobility okay that's your god basically right who, um, who's chosen you to be born right. as a noble oh excellent I like these guys yeah. <laughs> I have a good feeling about them and she's wearing the official robes um, of a priestess or a priest so that's um, the robes are white and red and on her shoulder she's got um, three different parts that uh, symbolize the sun rising from red to gold and on her belt there are two orbs of gold that symbolize the sun and she also has a scepter with the head shaped like a sun but that can also be used very efficiently to hit someone <laughs> <laughs> and obviously she did because you see can see a little bit of some drops of blood oh very on, noble <laughs> on her on her scepter and she's also breathing heavily and the two guards she has with her they're wearing chainmail armor and white surcoats with the symbol of her church so obviously they're sworn warriors of the church of priors mm. they are different orders you can't really tell which one it is but they are basically holy warriors that doesn't mean that they themselves are priests not at all yeah they're just fighting for the priesthood yeah so, oh <laughs> what do you do in this situation? Someone has caught your guy and they have been faster oh than you were. Um. Well, I'd say I, I'm not definitely not going to just charge in there, but I'm going to stop the horse and get off and... Yes. And, and let it be known that we want this person alive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the, the priestess looks up and... How... And she, she, she keeps her face very, very straight, very yeah. regular, and lifts one eyebrow and says, And who would you be? <laughs> do, would I know how to greet them properly? Because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, usually hey, you your say, eminence. <laughs> um, you know, eminence is a little bit high. You, yeah. um, she, she just got two, um, two orbs on her belt, that means she's a normal priest. Mm. And you usually, um, um, in German, you say, Oya mm Gnaden, -hmm. which would be. Mm. Your grace. Your grace, I suppose, but that's the address. That's you usually yeah, want that's, you that's okay. I don't know which the of what the official you call a priest. Father. Well <laughs> Padre. 
Um, well, <laughs> she's, if anything, she's mother and it's all... Uh, it could be lady. mother. I will just dress her as lady. La lady's yes. probably a good bet. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, my, my lady. <laughs> uh, or, or what you say is like, hail in the name of Prius. If you're faced with priest, you okay. invoke their god. Oh, that's good. Priest. Hail yeah. in the name of Prius. I like that. That sounds... Yeah. <laughs> Yes, hail in the name of Prius. I'm... And may Prius I rest on you too. What are you doing here? And do you have any business with this man? And she shows him a little bit. Yes, my name is Valeria, and this is my uh, partner, Antonio. This is news to me. Hello. <laughs> well, you know, in, in our endeavour, not... Yes, you know. companion. Co yes, it's my companion. I we, do we not care what specific relationship <laughs> you have. What are you doing here? We are hunting this man. We were hunting this man until you caught him. Well done, bravo. I don't need your sarcasm, <laughs> sir. That wasn't sarcastic. <laughs> We've been trailing him for days. <laughs> and so have we, and other of his kind. And others of his kind. Well, so, what, what I, you... I'd say your, your task is at an end and you can return home. Wait, what, what do you intend to do with him? Because... Kill him, of course! Ah, now, the, this, this, is, this is where we have a, a difference of opinion. Because he has vital information that we need to, in, need to extract. Af we... After that, you can yeah, You can kill him afterwards choose. if you want. Yeah, but we, 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 we need to interrogate him before we kill him. He has information about others of his ilk that may be useful to the realm. Of course I'm not going to kill him on the spot. Prius is the god of fairness and of trials, and of course he's going to stand trial. But I don't know why I should let you interrogate him. I don't know you, and I don't know what kind of business you have here. Well, in the name of the gods, of course. We are, well, sent by... <laughs> Or at least working for the goddess Raya, I suppose. And Raya, her, her eyebrow rises again, very high this time. Oh, does Priya's not like Raya? <laughs> not very much. You oh. know, um, the twelve gods they are working together, but, but there's a lot of rivalry. Yeah. And you know, Priya's is very, very stern, <laughs> and Raya is all like party. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we're all working towards the same goal, ending. The and that would be bringing of... this man to justice. Yes, and ending the threat of. The nameless, nameless one and his supporters, of course. So you do know who he is? Well, that is why we've been following him. Yes. <laughs> is that not why you've been following him? Yes, I have been. But I wasn't aware that anyone else knew about him. Well... Which is quite an oversight. Jean. Directs your gaze to the two of the soldiers, <laughs> which... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, but, um, I mean, we're being all very honest and fair here to each other, so, um, of course, we support, we very much support you giving this man a fair trial and having him brought to justice, but it would also serve the cause of justice if we were to extract the information that he has before any further steps may be taken. By the way, is this guy conscious? <laughs> is he listening he is. to this <laughs> He is. He, he hasn't yet. I, I, I can hear you. <laughs> no, he's... I'm right here, you know. <laughs> he's still there on his knees and he, he basically, you think he's just keeping his mouth shut because right now he's yeah. between, between two, 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 people. two people who are going to kill him <laughs> or do very nasty things to him. All in the name of justice, of course. And the gods, yes. yes. Right. Well, what do you say? Do you have a, a place where you were going to take him? Could we accompany you? Could we help you in any way? Yes, you could accompany me. If you swear an honest vow under the eye of Prahios that you are not going to be a hindrance and that you are going to follow my orders. Hmm. Oh, I'm not... Ah, oh, this is a... Uh, hmm. <laughs> Swearing vows and all that. That's all very serious. Yes, that's very serious. It is. Can... <laughs> <laughs> something I can do. Something I can do. Where are my cards? <laughs> Flaming sword. <Dun. laughs> Flaming shield. <laughs> can, can I do anything with my nobility status? Yeah, of, of course you've got proof that you're of, of noble birth. Yes. So you've got probably got your signet ring or yeah. things like that. So okay. you can prove to her that you're 
um, a person that is very trustworthy in her eyes because you've been chosen by her god. Yes, I, I, I need... a leader of men. Maybe you should do some talking. My lady, I need to make no vows for, as you see by this signet ring here, I am a baron of Milton Keynes. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> that swears loyalty to... The Empress of the Midden Realm. The Empress of the Midden Realm, absolutely. We're going to work on that. <laughs> We're going to work on that.